this lecture, so this lecture is going to spend, I uh, probably is most likely I'm going to spend two classes, like today and the next Monday. So we will finish this uh, lecture. So this lecture is titled Alternative and a Choice. So essentially, what are we going to do in this chapter or in this lecture? So I'm going to provide you a set of principles for understanding the economics of how individuals make choices, right? So in your principle class, you may have learned 10 principles of economics, okay? So how many of you have the study principle of microeconomics? Can you raise your hand? Oh, some, okay. So, and for the rest of students, so don't worry. So we will cover the essential principle of microeconomics. Those are essential to, for you to understand macroeconomics. For those who already uh, started principle of microeconomics, and just sit tight, okay? And then in the second part of this uh, lecture, I'm gonna explain to you production possibility frontier. This stands for PPP or PPF. And this PPF is very important to understand a few issues we are going to extensively study. So this includes, so we use PPF, we can understand economic growth. Okay. So this PPF is also help us understand the benefit of trade. Okay, but in order to understand the benefit of trade, here specifically, I mean international trade. To understand why we can benefit from trade, so then we need to understand opportunity costs. All right, so this is a roadmap of this chapter. But for today, so let's just focus on a set of principles for understanding economics and how we as individuals make decisions. Right here, I want to highlight the difference between micro and macro. What is micro? Micro, we just look at individual, how they respond. What is macro? Macro is, okay, so each individual, they respond to different incentives. And then, then collectively, we observe some phenomena. All right, let me just give you an example. Right? Think about our room, right? So in the macro level, you observe, you feel the temperature. Right? And you feel the humidity and you feel the pressure. So, this is an aggregate level. You think about this is equivalent to macroeconomics. But in the individual level or micro level, so in this room, we have trillions of monikers, right? So, they're moving around. So, these monikers, so how they move and what it detects their movement is depending on the temperature, right? The higher the temperature, then the monikers are going to move faster. Are you with me? So this is what you learn in the high school physics, right? Okay, so now you can see the connection, right? So in a micro level, each individual moniker, they respond to the temperature, they respond to the pressure, they respond to the humidity. On a macro level, so there are trillions of moniker, their movement collectively jointly determine the temperature the humidity, the pressure we feel, right? And then, so in terms of economics, individual, so we respond to price, right? So for example, so we are a big fan of Costco. I know so a lot of people are a big fan of Costco. So we took a lot of effort to go to Costco to pump gas, right? But say for example, one day BP, so BP is a good uh, good company. I'm not advocate, advocating for BP, right? So I just, just pick up example. Say for example, BP, the price of, of a gasoline is cheaper than Costco. We probably is gonna change our behavior. Does that make sense? So we respond, respond to the price change. As I told you Monday, so we recently, we decided to refinance our house. Why we do that? Because we respond to the price. What is the price? It's the interest rate, right? Okay, so individual, we respond to price, but in aggregate level, how that change seems. So a perfect example is face masks. Like we had some face mask from two years ago when I was traveling in the, summer, in the winter and I got a cold and my wife so bought some um, face mask to protect family because I got like a very bad flu. And then, so in, in early this year, the sudden did the face mask 
the price of her price is like tenfold, right? And why the price of FaceMag becomes tenfold? It's because suddenly the demand chain, right? And why the demand chain? Because individual response. Because everyone was worried about the virus. Everyone want to want to protect yourself, protect your family. So the demand chain. Does it make sense? So individual will respond to the aggregate. Okay, but then so each individual we make our decision, and we collectively is going to determine some aggregate variable, or we are going to generate some, generate some aggregate phenomena. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we move to the next slide. Choice. All right. So this is principle number one. Right. Choice is the heart of economics, like this background picture, right? So I just recently updated. So in, in my previous class, I always has a lady who must choose different son, uh, cell phone. But uh, so this year I decided to change to something more current, okay? And they must choose, right? Like this background. And then their choice affect others. So you may want to ask yourself, right, so there are two politicians, right? And presumably, so both of them will become president, right? Anyway, so I don't know what would happen. But then, so one person choose not wearing face masks publicly, but the other person choose wear face masks publicly, right? Why they do that? So they must have their choice, and then their choice is going to affect themselves and affect others, right? So you understand that, okay? So this is give example, and then so this is our principle number one: choices are necessary because resources are scarce. Right? And then so you may wondering, what are the resources, and why they are scarce? In this picture. What are the resources? Why they are scarce? Okay, so the resources here or lies in this discussion is what? So they are trying to attract the attention from their voters, right? They want to show their image, right? So if I wear a face mask, so I may show our image. Okay, so I care cares about public health. I give you a good example. But on the other hand, so I may lose something, which is, okay, so man wearing a face mask, particularly a politician, maybe is a sign of weakness, right? So then, so as an individual, so they are gonna ponder it. So should I wear or not? If I wear, I'm going to win some voters. If I not wear, I may lose some voters. Okay? And then, so in this particular case, so that is, uh, main concern but of course but of course so they also have a concern of their personal health right may not as severe as us because they probably have access to uh the, the the test almost every day right and even they got drivers they probably get the first grade of treatment so that they, that probably is in the second order consideration for them but the first order of a consideration for them probably is so they may lose the potential vote, or they may have a negative image for themselves, right? But apparently those vote, those vote or those image are unlimited, right? So in that sense, they may make choice whether I wear a face mask in public or not. And similarly for us, we have the choice, right? Like why I wear face masks, you may see I'm wearing two face masks, right? Why is that? Because first, I need to wear face masks to protect you and protect myself. And secondly, so you can feel, so I sometimes have, I speak very loud. I can even feel myself, so it's very humid inside. So if I'm not wearing two face masks, and then so the aerosol is gonna spread up, right? So you can see, so, but apparently, so it's very uncomfortable for me. So after one hour teaching, I feel suffocated. It's just not tired, not exhausted, just feel suffocated. All right, okay. But this is back to the principle. Choices are necessary because resources are scarce. If resources are 
plenty un abandoned, and we have no, we don't need to make choice, right? Choice number one. And here we have a few concepts explain the principle number one: resources, anything that can be used to produce something else. Okay. Again, use face mask as example. And here, so what is the resource? The face mask. What face mask can produce? Face mask can, can produce prediction to you and to people around you. Scarce. What is scarce? In short supply. A resource is, is scarce when there's no, not enough of the resource available to satisfy all the various ways a society wants to use it. Okay, right now, so the face mask is in short supply. Right? So in the early stage of pandemic, you probably heard the story. So we have those frontline uh, healthcare providers or the doctors, nurse, they have to reuse the face mask, right? But actually this face mask is supposed to use every four, or you have supposed to change every four hours. And why they will have to wear that again and again? Because there's no alternative, right? Because it's scarce. They must make a choice between wear it or not. Another example, like in New York, you probably heard from the, from the story, or even in, in Italy. So in the darkest moment, the doctor may make a decision who they want to save, right? Why they, make, why they have to make such decision? It's because the resource they have is limited. What are the resources they have? The equipment, the attention, right, to save people's life okay now second principle the true cost of something is its opportunity cost and what is opportunity cost opportunity cost what you must give up in order to get something right and in this background picture so mark zuckerberg the founder of facebook and he quit from harvard and he gave up what he what was his opportunity cause when he decided to quit he gave up a diploma he gave up a degree from harvard right and you can think further essentially he gave up a good job because if he graduated from harvard he may become a professor in a prominent university so that's what he gave up but that's why he decided to give up because alternatively, he set up his own business and this own business becomes the trillion dollar business. Or oh, in other words, if Mark Zuckerberg decide to stick with Harvard and what he is giving up, he gave up the opportunity to set up a trillion dollar business, which is Facebook, right? And so we, face the same discussion every day, right? So what is the opportunity cause for us to come to school? What is the opportunity cause for we to take a Zoom class, right? If we come to school, so what do we give up? Right? If we stay at home, what do we give up? So we have a similar discussion, right? Also, I want to emphasize what, so when we calculate opportunity cause, is something you give up, that gives you the highest value. Or in other words, when you give up something, but sorry, uh, in other words, let's say we give them there are A versus B choice, right? Like in this case, Mark Zuckerberg, A, you just stay with Harvard. Let's just say stay with Harvard. And the second, the queen. Now, if we want to understand the opportunity cost of stay in Harvard. And then, so how we are going to calculate? So we are going to look at the option B, which is he quit. But then, so you need to look at what is the highest possible reward he can potentially get if he decide to quit. Because he quit, he can do many things, right? He can just stay home, play video game. Or he can go to Silicon Valley, work for say, you know, Google. Or he can go to a per, uh, university, become the professor. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, he quit. So if he quit, he cannot become a professor. So if he, he quit, he may just do some, uh, become the banker. Or if he quit, he may lots of options. So he he set up his own business, right? 
when we calculate the opportunity cost, we just find out the alternative that brings him the highest value. So that's opportunity cost. All right. So now this is the second um, principle. Now we go to the third principle. Okay. How much is the position at the margin? All right. Like in this background picture. So how much candy bar should I eat? Okay. And then, so when we make that decision, we think about in the margin. Meaning, so we think about the lost one or lost the buy. Okay. We must think about okay, if I take the extra bite of candy bar, what I gain and what I lost. Okay? And then so essentially we are facing a trade-off. What is a trade-off? Trade-off is a comparison of cost and the benefit and doing something. Like here in this candy bar, right? So it take extra bite. What is the cause? What is the benefit? The benefit is I have temporary enjoyment because sugar is brings you some satisfaction very easily and quickly. And what is the cause? Besides monetary cost, monetary cost, that's trivial because the candy bar probably costs you one dollar. Okay, but actually, so this high amount of sugar is can give you a lot of health issue. The other day I was reading an article, it says sugar make you aging faster sugar actually so can give you lots of health issues like uh you have heart disease you have uh, diabetes you have overweight so on and so forth right and then so when you decide whether i want to take extra bite so you may wait the trade-off right so this is a trade-off now here we have a few uh, related concepts marginal choice Sorry, marginal decision. Marginal decision is decision made at the margin of an activity about whether to do a buy a, a bit more or a bit less of that activity. Okay. Like in previous slides, so whether I take another bite of the candy bar okay. or think about cloth, should I come to school or not? Or think about you go to shopping, should I just go to Costco or not? Right, what is the cost? What is the benefit? Right? And the marginal analysis is a study of marginal decision. Right? And the final incentive, what is the incentive? Incentive is anything that offers reward to people who change their behavior. Right? Give you an example, like in our classroom. So I give you bonus point questions. That's going to change your incentive. Right, because you want, I, I assume everyone want to have a higher grade. So if you want to have a higher grade, then you have the incentive to take the bonus point. And then I, in some sense, I take advantage of your behavior. Okay, and then link this bonus point question with a tendency. Because later you can see, in order to open that question, you must have a code. But the code will given in class. So that means I just twist your incentive so that make sure you do the right things. But here, right things is defined by you participate, you engage, you learn, and then eventually you get rewarded with high grade. All right, so this is incentive. Now, we can look at this discussion. All right, so again, I update the slides. Like in the previous one, so the slides or the discussion is about whether we should ban sugary drink or not. And this is from the local news. Uh, it's Omaha Major. Uh, it's a she, no? She believes a mask mandate will help flatten the curve. But then the local news interviewed the different residents. They have very different opinions. Right. So here I'm not advocating where or not. Here I just want to you to look at this issue through the lens of economics. 
to identify to identify what is the incentive, to identify what is trade-off, to identify what is the marginal decision, to identify what is the scarcity, what is the resource. Right? Okay, so here are just these two different opinions. And then I so wanted to discuss, do you agree that a mask should be mandated? Why or why not? Okay. Unfortunately, so because of the pandemic, so it's difficult for us to do discussion. Now, for this one, I can give you my opinion or kind of explain to you how we are going to discuss. Starting from next week, because we switched to Zoom, so whenever I say I wanted to discuss, and then so what I want you to want you to do is you just probably take you, I probably just give you two minutes, and you think, and you form your uh, idea, and then so you type through chat, so I can just pick up the chat and this and, and analyze what you say, or just kind of uh, you know, uh, leads you toward the right direction. Okay, so when I say right direction, essentially just explain to you how we look at this social issue through the lens of economics. Does that make sense? Okay, now let me just quickly explain so how I think about this issue, right? So this is a decision, this is a social issue, right? So the government want to force everyone to wear a face mask. So wear a face mask has trade-off. What is a trade-off? So on the benefit side, Scientists believe face masks can help to slow the spread, right? Like last week, I mentioned an article that says if each American worker wear a face mask, and then so potentially can save GDP around fifty dollars. So that's a benefit. But what is the cost? The cost is for sure the face mask costs you money. I I don't know how much you pay. So like we bought a uh, face mask from Costco. Uh, so the price decreased from $20 to, I believe now it's like $12, right? For 50. And then my wife told me, so two years ago when she bought a box of um, uh, face masks, she stuck at home was only $4 for 50. But either way, it costs you money. It's number one, there's a cost. What else costs? is not comfortable, right? And the third, so this now doesn't look pretty, right? And the fourth, so this is going to eventually, it's going to create lots of uh, environmental damage, right? And the fifth, so this is going to create what problem? So essentially we divert resource towards face masks. Does that make sense? Because we need a factory to produce these things, right? But those factories, they can potentially produce other things, but now they have to produce this. So they are, okay, so I can name many, many disadvantage or costs. But then, so why, why the government advocate face max mandate? It must be the case, what? In the margin, in the margin. The life we save, the GDP we save out with the cost I just named, right? Just think about so to what extent if everyone wear a face mask, how many lives we can save? Just think about to what extent the GDP can recover if everyone wear, wear a mask. Does it make sense? Okay, so this is the margin and this is trade off, right? And then let me further illustrate incentive. What's the incentive? So people may say, okay, I have freedom. This is a free country. Like my son always say, this is a free country. I can do whatever I want. But I told him, no, there are rules. And then in some sense, these rules are incentive, right? What, so how we are gonna get incentive? There are a couple of ways. Number one, so we have news to, add, to, to educate people, to tell them, so if you cares about yourself, cares about your family, cares about uh, the society, you may, you may want to wear a face mask. Number one. Then number two, so if the person still cannot be convinced, and then they have fines, right? So I, I forgot, so what, is there a fine for the city of Obama or not, if you're not wearing masks in, in public? I heard some points like $90, right? Something around that range. So that's incentive. Yes, you, 
you don't care. So and then so if the police called you, so you're gonna pay ninety dollar for not wearing mask. That's insane. Does that make sense? So that's going to change people's behavior. And why people change their behavior is because everyone are responsible to insanity. All right. So this is economics. Okay. So we look at issue exclusively through the lens of economics. I did touch some health issue, but we only look at the health issue through the lens of economics, right? We talk about life safe, but we only look at a life safe in terms of economic value. In some sense, economists is a very cruel animal because we look at everything in terms of price time. All right? Does that make sense? But doesn't mean we are cold blood. We just look at this issue in a very, very objective way. Because we just put a value on everything so that we can make the right choice. Does it make sense? So this is economics, right? Now, fourth principle, people usually respond to incentive, exploiting opportunity to make themselves better off. Right. Here example, in the United States, restaurant customers have the option of adding a tip to the restaurant bill. In much of Europe, a tip is added automatically. Where would you expect waiters to be more attentive? So we need to identify what is the incentive. The incentive here is what? Is the money you're gonna get or the pay you're gonna bring home, right? And then so here in this example, the waiter or waitress said the response to incentive. And then so you should expect in the United States, in the restaurant, the waiter will be more attentive. Why? Because the money they're gonna bring home is tied with the attention they give. But in Europe, it's just regardless how well you serve your customer. So I get the same amount of pay. But some may argue, okay, so they have their professional standard. I agree, but it's given those professional standards or their the working ethics. So given those things, we exclusively focus on this incentive, you should see a different response, right? Now we can look at another example. Okay. I give you one minute to read this and I'll give myself a break. So first, in this story, there are three parties. Prison. And then so we have a judge. And finally, we have a team. Just to give you a little background, I understand that we have international students. So in the United States, in some, in some part of the country, the prison is privately owned or private operated, okay? So I can build a prison as long as get some license from the, from the government. And then what am I, what, I, how, what, is, the, what is my business model? So pretty much I built a prison. And then so the, the government through certain China send the prison to my, send prisoners to my prison. And then so I get reimbursement from the government. Just think about the hotel, but the hotel this is not, this is a not nice hotel, right? 
this is a hotel for a, a very special customer. And who pay the bill? The government. So this is, uh, this is a background story. Now in this story, we have three parties. Number one is a juvenile prison. Just think about those developers. Okay? And then so we have judges. Judges in some sense here you represent the government. Right? And finally we have a team. The team essentially is a customer in some sense. Okay, quote unquote. And then so what's wrong inside this story? What is disturbing? The disturbing thing is that the judges, oh sorry, start with the juvenile prison. So those developers or who own the prison, they want to maximize their own product. And then what they can do, so they are gonna attract as many prisoners as they can. It's like hotel, they are trying to attract as many guests as they can, right? And then so in this case, how they can attract people. So they are going to target the judges. So they are going to convince judge, please send more customer to my prison, okay? And the judges, so now go to the second, second part in this story. The judges, what the judges can do, so they have power. So they can decide who should be sent to prison, who are free, right? And then the judges, so now that goes to the incentive part. The judges, so they face the incentive or the face the trade-off. Right? So if I send a one innocent teenager to the prison, what is my cause and what is my benefit? The benefit is here. In total, the judges receive 2.6 million. So that's the benefit. And what is the cost? Eventually, so the judges were caught and was, was the justice was hold, right? And then plead guilty. And himself or herself must serve in the prison. So that's the cost, right? But in each case, what they gonna do, so you can think about, so they probably just wait how much I'm gonna receive, and what's the chance I get caught, right? If the chance is 1%, right? Or versus 0.1%, okay? Should I do that or not? This is similar like us, right? So we go out every day, okay? If the risk of spread of, of the virus is very, very low, I guess most of us probably just not bother to wear a face mask like a regular flu season, right? But now because, because the COVID-19 is so dangerous, it's spread so quick and so fast. So we, everyone wear a face mask. This is a similar story, right? Okay, this is this case of that. Again, I was trying to teach you, look at a social issue through the lens of economics. But now we are still in microeconomics. Okay. Next one. There are gains from trade. Okay. And this is because trade allows us all to consume more than we otherwise could. Okay. Like in this background picture. So this background picture has two different locations or two different economies or two different society. One, apparently super poor. The other one is typical American um, suburb or fairly wealthy, right? And then we are going to explain to you, even these two society, they look so different. And it seems like second one on the right hand side of, of the slides, so this one, looks dominant, technology-wise, economy-wise, dominant, this poor one. But still you're gonna see, so the trade can make them both better off. Or in other words, trade 
not only can benefit this poor society, think about so this rich country can export technology, like better agricultural products, so on and so forth. That means the technology, then not not the not the food itself. Export them the tractors, say for example, or computers, or cell phones, so on and so forth. Right? Not only the rich society can help the poor one or can make the poor one better off. Okay, surprisingly, so the rich country can also benefit from the poor one. And the secret underneath that is because specialization. But in order to understand specialization, we need to understand opportunity costs. Okay, just give you an example. Okay, so what do you think is going to be the opportunity cost for me to mow our own loans? Let me say it again. So if in the summer I decide to mow, mow all my loans in the house, what do you think was the opportunity cost? In order to, to understand that, so you need to understand what are the alternative I can do during the time I mow our loan, right? What I can do, I can give a lecture. I can write a paper. I can have an interview with the local news TV. Right? Or I can just watch some movies. And then, so what is the opportunity cost? I just find out the highest value I can do alternatively instead of mow our own loan, right? So most likely the opportunity cost for me to mow the loan is $100. But now, what is going to be the opportunity cost of my son to mow the loan? Maximum, probably $20, right? Because he's only 30 years old. He, he barely has any ability to, to make money. Yes, he was planning to be a coach because he's a good swimmer. And we had a plan. So he's, he's going to teach his fellow classmate during the summer. But then the pandemic is. We also had a plan to send him into the local a uh, public library to be a volunteer. But again, so pretty much everywhere is closed, okay? So in that sense, what is the opportunity cost? If he spent one hour, if he not spending one hour to mow our loan, what he can do? Maximum $20. Now, this is the idea of a specialization, right? So if I mow our loan, I give up $100 basically. And if he mow our loan, so he give up $20. Now, hopefully you can see the story. So if we exchange, I let him to mow the loan, I pay him $30, he's gonna pay it off. But $30 here is a bargain for me because otherwise I'm gonna lose $100. Does that make sense? And so, yes, okay. So if you are not fully understand, and don't worry, we have one chapter is going to devote to understand, to expand the specialization to expand the trade-off to expand the benefit trade but hopefully from this example you have uh, you smell the flavor of the benefit of trade okay all right back to slides so this is a specialization the situation in which each person specialized in the task that he or she is good at performing. But again, so this specialization is in terms of opportunity costs. Like back to the example I used earlier, right? Say for example, so in the example I just gave to you, me and my son, and we only has two skills. One is mode alone. The other is giving public lecture right and then so you can clearly see so my son he is specialized in mode alone because he probably he cannot give a lecture because he doesn't have the knowledge doesn't have the experience right but for me i'm specialized giving lectures uh, even though so i probably is, is better than compared to him in both giving lecture and mode alone but i'm probably is, is more specialized in giving lectures so this is what we call a specialization. And then this specialization gives us room to better off, to become better off 
per exchange. Does it make sense? Okay, so this is specializing. Okay, so we will have one chapter to devote it to understand what does specialization means and why we can benefit through trade based on the based on the idea of specialization. And but in that in that chapter, we are going to look at the country level. We are going to understand so why United States can benefit from trading with Mexico, say for example, or from trading with the rest of the world, right? Now, next principle, markets move towards equilibrium. What is equilibrium? Equilibrium is an economic situation in which no individual would be better off doing something different. I would like to use FISMAX as an example to explain to you what is equilibrium. So FISMAX price fluctuates but well, eventually settled at some point, right? And what driven, what drives the price of the face mask? It depending on supply and demand. Now let's think about from the demand side. If the face mask becomes like $50 per bag or per box in Costco, and certainly our desire to buy is gonna decrease. But still, we want to protect us. And then what are we going to do? So we probably choose stay at home more than before to reduce the demand, right? So we are going to respond to that. On the supply side, if the price of Facebook collapsed to, say, for example, $10 per box, and then the manufacturer, their incentive to produce will go down. Right? And then what is the equilibrium? Equilibrium is in the situation, the price is there. Okay? So we as a customer, we have no incentive to change our behavior. Because we buy more, buy less, we won't affect our well-being. And similarly for the supplier, so they have no incentive to adjust their behavior. All right? So And then so we reach an equilibrium. Okay? So another example of equilibrium is think about we go to uh, target to buy stuff. When we go to the checkout, right, it's a target, so the, the way to do the checkout, so I think this is a recent innovation. So say there are three cashiers, one, two, three, sorry, four, four cashiers, right? And now, so these days, how we are going to check out. So earlier, there's one exclusive line, right? Now, so they change, sorry, Now, they, they change the strategy. I mean, it's a business. They have one line, and it's up to you. So everyone's lined up here to decide whether I go here, go here, go here, or go there, right? Now, this is, this is similar like equilibrium. What is the equilibrium? When you are here, when you are here, we are, when you are in front of line, so you might decide, should I go to A, B, C, or D? And what is the equilibrium? Equilibrium is, okay, so everywhere has equal amount of time, equal amount of uh, customer, or more precisely, with, whether which line you join, you have expected waiting time. And then we are in an equilibrium. And why this equilibrium exists? It's just because you as a customer, so you have the ability to understand what is going to be the waiting time in front of each line. And you decide which line I'm going to do. And you behave on your best interest. I, I assume everyone wants to minimize the waiting time, except you are waiting for somebody else, right? And then, so we are in equilibrium because when you are here, because everyone does the same things, so no one is going to leave one line significantly shorter than the other one. If that's the case, and somebody is going to exploit that opportunity, and then we are in the equilibrium. All right. Now we have a short video to watch to understand how equilibrium looks like in real economy. So this is a background. So this is in the market for Tulu in Netherlands. 
So they have a very, very interesting auction style. Okay? Typically, auction will say, okay, so the price is bid up. If, I, if you ever have experience with eBay, okay? So someone start with $1 and then, so someone says higher, higher, higher. But they have opposite. So the price is lower, but it's the same. But you're gonna see when is the equilibrium, nobody has the incentive to, think about eBay. When is, what is the equilibrium? Nobody has the incentive to bid higher. And then we settle the deal, right? And the eBay is interesting, but similar here. So uh, once we approach the end of the auction, you can see prices adjusting fairly quick, right? As an individual, so when you cast your vote or when you um, uh, put your bid, you not only you need to think about, okay, so what is the chance of winning? Also, you need to think about how many additional bid there will be, right? If there's only one second left, so the chance you have a uh, competing bid is almost zero. But if there's a one hour left, and then you need to factor in, so there may be a potentially a lot of competing bid, right? Okay, so that's a perfect real-time example to show you how market equilibrium is reached. Okay, now let's just watch this short video. No sound. So maybe, okay, so maybe I can show you next time. Because the apparent is if I, if I project these things on the projector, because uh, this is only, only four. So the sound will disappear. So maybe we can either you watch yourself or I can show you next time, right? It's up to you. So now, okay, so I'm gonna stop today's material in this slide. And then so we are gonna see each other on Zoom. Monday, right? Make sure you can register. So, so far I have 41 students registered for the Zoom. If you have not registered, you won't, can, you won't able to log in. You must register for the Zoom link, all right? If you have any question, send me an email tonight. All right, okay. So what do we have learned so far? We have learned six principles. Okay, so go back to the slides, make sure you understand what are those six principles. And so the way you learn is, okay, just look at these six principles. Okay, go home, talk to your parents, talk to your siblings. Okay, think about it, uh, what will happen in daily life, right? And see, okay, so whether you can apply those six principles. Okay? These six principles should be able to apply any single detail things we face today, every day. Like we are our family, we have two kids, right? And then, then so how they are gonna split the chores, okay? And so what movie they're gonna watch, how long they're gonna watch, everything can be applied, can be absorbed or can be understand by these six principles. Like right now, so in the pandemic, everyone wants to extra screen time, right? And then so we are trying to teach them, so there's a trade off. They may not listen because my son is only 13 and my daughter, she's only nine. And then so we are trying to give them incentive, right? Maybe like a punishment, but the punishment is part of incentive, right? And then we teach them tra trade off, teach them incentive. And also there's a margin like, okay, so you have watching now, so you should stop, right? So that's how you understand. Now, what are we gonna do next? 
Then next, we are going to explain to you T, um, PPF production possibility frontier. But there's the production frontier and the future material we are going to do essentially is what is a model. Okay. And here, what is a model? Model is a simplified representation of real situation. That is used to better understand a real life situation. And we are trying to understand economic aspect of real life. And this model is just simplified our economic life. Okay, use pandemic as example. So from economic point of view, we look at the cause and the benefit of wearing the mask or not. We look at the cause of benefit, you go out or not. We look at the cause of benefit, who should we save? We look at the cause of benefit, when and how we are going to open school. But certainly there are other aspects, right? But economics or economists, so our job is look at this in a scientific objective way. But that is why at the end when we make our decision as a society, we not only need economists, we need other people. But we, our profession is, we look at the thing through the lens of economics. We need to be very sharp, very precise, very scientific, very objective. So in that sense, as I told you early, or warned you early, the economist at some point is a very cold block. But we need this cold block opinion so that we have a comprehensive view. What should we do to make our society better? I'm going to stop here today and have a great weekend. Stay safe and see you on Zoom. All right. Let me know if you have any question. Thank you so much for online session and I'll see you next week.